What's up guys, in this video I'll just be going over a project I recently created for the finally finish something game jam. So for this game jam it was all about finishing a project that you've been working on for a while. Instead of doing that I used it as an opportunity to create an entire game in the set time frame. And with that being said this video will basically just be a devlog that goes over the entire process of the game development as a whole. So right off the bat, I knew I was going to make a roguelike game, so I didn't really have a theme in mind yet, so I just went with pirates, which I guess works. So I got into a sprite and I started doing some animating. The animations took quite a while, but I got some ones that I'm pretty satisfied with, complete in about three or four days. As soon as that was done, I got them imported into Godot, and I totally didn't forget how to set up an animation player. So I tried my hardest to remember everything, but um, by try my hardest to remember, I mean I literally reread the entire page of anything to do with animations or animation players on the Godot documentation, so that was fun. But I eventually figured it out and I got everything imported correctly and I got a nice animation state machine set up. So I set up an idle, run, and dash state, which are all blending perfectly. Now there's obviously a ton of code involved in getting all the states to adapt correctly to the user input and I ran into a lot of glitches, but you guys probably don't care about all the technical stuff behind the scenes, so I'm just gonna skip right through that and um, yeah, it, it ended up working great. So uh, player movement is all set and working great. I then moved on to creating a script that will randomly generate a level, which is very unique. And it's basically impossible to get the same level twice in a row or even twice ever. Huge shout out to Heartbeast though for making a tutorial series on how to do this kind of random generation in Godot because I had never done anything like this before and he helped a ton with that. So shout out to him, go check him out. Um, he does a lot of awesome game development content and a lot of stuff in Godot. Now, after I got all the auto tiling set up and the random generation, I had to set up a navigation system for each map. So I just put a navigation polygon on each of the floor tiles so that enemies can detect where they're supposed to walk and then they will navigate towards the player. And I didn't want the enemies to just beeline towards the Player. So I created a system where the enemies will generate a certain radius around the player and then they will rotate that by a random amount and follow that specific position so that it'll be a bit more random when encountering enemies. Overall though, the rest of the enemy development was pretty straightforward. I have a very basic run animation for the skeletons that I just flipped left to right because I was too lazy to make up and down animations. And then the attacking is literally just an area 2D, so if they get in range of the player, they will attack, reset a timer, and when that timer runs out, then they will have a chance to attack again. Pretty straightforward. There's also a chance that the enemies will turn into like a boss version, which will simply just make them bigger, faster, a bit stronger, and give them a unique hat and name. Next up, I created a starting level. So when you spawn in, you'll be in this really sick looking, really cool, awesome little level, and uh, it looks really cool. I don't think I mentioned that yet, but um, it's, it's pretty cool. So the first thing you'll do when you spawn in is you read the sign, which will have a bit of dialogue, and it will then spawn a crystal, which also looks very cool. I spent a lot of time on this crystal animation, and I'm really happy with how it came out. It was mainly animated with the Godot animation system, but I also used Spritemancer, which is a super powerful effects animation tool that actually just came out like within the past month, and it was released by Code Manu. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but he made a ton of really cool programs, so you should definitely check them out. I'll leave a link to that in the description. I guess I should also mention that I created this pretty cool spawn animation um, using Sprite Mancer as well. Now, obviously, you don't need any like fancy animations for a game like this, and I was probably wasting a lot of time. I could have spent doing other things like bug fixes, but I had a lot of fun creating it, and it was just a bit of practice in Sprite Mancer, and I think it turned out pretty well. Now, one of the hardest things 
things personally to set up in a game, in my opinion, is the user interface or anything to do with like menus or GUI layers. But um, I spent a full day on trying to get this all set up and I got a pretty modular dialogue system working fairly quickly. But essentially, I set it up so that I'll be able to pass any array of strings or other values like a dictionary with certain keys to represent values for specific events I want to trigger through that dialogue and then the dialogue will iterate through each value in the array and execute the desired process for whatever I passed through. So to simplify that I literally just made a basic dialogue system. So uh, yeah. But even with all the fancy options that I created for this system, I hardly used any of them in the final product. I mean, I guess it wasn't a waste of time because I figured out a new way to do this kind of thing, which is very helpful and I'll be using it in the future. But overall, it wasn't extremely productive for the output. I then test played the game a bit and realized that the battle mechanics were kind of bland. So I wanted to add a lot of juice to the game. So I added a screen shake and screen zoom functionality and I also added a super slight slow motion effect for when the player dashes. I then got to work on a ton more VFX um, using Sprite Mancer again but I got some different VFX for hitting the enemies and also destroying them. Now one of the key components in any game is um, a, a reason why you should play it so um, really there's there's no reason to play a game unless it's fun right so I wanted to make this game fun and what better way to make a roguelike game fun than to add the main component of a roguelike game that main component being upgrades which in this case I used cards so at the end of each level you'll have a choice between three different cards and you can select one each card has a different perk that it will apply to your character for that run and obviously all the perks will be reset upon your death but I had a lot of fun making different kinds of perks. So I have some basic ones right now that increase stats like your attack or your knockback power. I also have a couple that increase things like the length of your dash or the speed of enemies so that you can slow them down, which makes the game a lot easier. And then I added a couple interesting ones. So there's this one card where every time you kill an enemy, you'll have a chance to just spawn another version of yourself. So then you'll be controlling one extra player and obviously I had to make this balanced so it's not extremely OP since all your clones will have less HP and less attack power but it is still pretty fun because once you get the rate really high up there you'll have like 20 clones just running around the map destroying everything and it's extremely satisfying now as you can see from the footage here the game is extremely um unbalanced and pretty hard so we're just gonna call that a skill issue um and we're just gonna move on so uh yeah so now the game is completely released on itch after i finished up a few basic technical things like an intro and proper game flow i just put it out there because i was really tired of working on it for the past month i was literally waking up at like 5 a.m and then working on it for like eight hours straight and then going to work on top of that every day so it got really tiring so i I just YOLO'd it and released it the way it was. Anyway, it's a bit unbalanced right now, but at least it's playable, and I guess that's all that matters really for a game jam, especially with a limited amount of time. It's really important to just get everything done and get a game that's playable out there um, before the deadline, obviously. And that's really all I got for the devlog recap. There are a lot of clips that I recorded during development that got deleted or corrupt. So that is very unfortunate, but I was really trying to frantically go through the entire process and remember all the steps I took but obviously there are a lot of parts that I missed but anyway I did want to mention that I am really thankful that I had the opportunity to join this game jam it was really fun um, it was just a really good opportunity that um, really pushed me out of my comfort zone in making a game style that I have never really tried in the past but overall the community was great it was really fun 
fun to see everyone else's progress along the way. People were posting their progress regularly in the Discord server, so that was really cool. And just overall, it was a great experience. At the time of posting this video, the Game Jam status is still in the voting stage, so we won't get to see who placed first or really how well each game performed. But I do think there are a ton of super cool games that got entered, and it was really fun to play through some of them. I still have to play through a couple, but there are a lot of really cool ones. So if you have any time to spare, I would highly suggest going and checking those out because there are, again, a lot of pretty cool games that got entered. Anyway, though, I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video. It definitely does help support the channel and it does mean a lot to me. So thank you for that. I also wanted to briefly mention that I will be posting more frequently here in the future. I was busy the past month obviously with this game so i hadn't really posted any videos um, in the entire month of january so i will be posting i just want to let you guys know that i'm not dead or anything i will continue to post videos and tutorials to help you guys with anything game development related and uh yeah let me know if there's any content you guys would like to see let me know if this was interesting and maybe i'll do some more of this in the future but um yeah that's about it see ya